Refitting a radio controlled Glasgow paddle steamer. Part 4. Refitting the engine to the brass mounting plates and fitting it back into the boat. If you've been following this series you will realise that I removed the paint from these brass mounting plates because the paint was badly chipped. Now I'm finishing off the job using some Scotch Brite. And in this clip I'm also cleaning up the base of the boiler. I've cheated on this one, I actually cleaned up this brass banding on my polishing spindle and I'm finishing it off with some Brasso wadding. Followed by removing the residue with a cotton cloth. And this process leaves the boiler bands really nice and shiny. The boiler bands are not part of this episode, so I'll get back on track. This is the engine sat on the bench laid on its side. Although it's not really laid on its side, this is the position that the engine will be mounted in the boat itself. If you notice the oil holes in the bearings, face upwards. If it was a vertical type engine to sit in an open launch, these holes would be at the top. The engine is secured to the mounting using four brass bolts and four nuts with locking washers in between. And these locking washers are really essential because otherwise, with the vibration of the engine, the bolts would probably over time work loose. Jobs like this can be very fiddly, and as my hands are massive relative to the size of these nuts and bolts, I'm using a small pair of surgical forceps to hold the nut in position until the threads of the bolt engage with it. That's one down, on to the rest of them. It's important not to tighten these parts up until you've got them all in position. And if you don't tighten them as you go, sometimes you can find that later on in the job, one or more of the bolts might not go into the holes properly. But not so in this case, because these holes are well oversized for the diameter of the bolts. Now that everything's in place, I can finally tighten them up. And the good thing about using steel locking washers is that the sharp edges of the locking washers bites both into the piece of metal you're mounting it to and the nut itself, so you don't need to use a spanner. What's next? It's time to test the engine and make sure it works. Here it is, mounted securely onto its mounting base. And as always, before running a steam engine, it's very important to oil it. Starting with quite a bit of oil into the inlet, that will lubricate the cylinders. I also applied some oil to every other moving part of the engine. And for a quick test, I'm connecting a piece of silicone rubber tubing to supply some compressed air to the engine. And as you can see, it runs immediately. Well, at least until I turned the pressure up, that blew the pipe off the inlet. Time to try again. And as you've just seen, the pipe blew off a second time. So I fitted the pipe to the exhaust connector because it really doesn't matter with an oscillating cylinder engine which side you feed the compressed air or steam into. And now the pressure's holding, I can demonstrate the regulator reversing valve. As you can see from this clip, the position of the regulator reversing valve is very important. If you move it too far, it starts to go to reverse again. They work very well, but it's important to make sure the servo is in exactly the right position, giving exactly the right travel. This Cheddar model's pintail engine is really good, so it can go back into the boat. The mounting bracket just screws to a substantial wooden block using four screws. I've connected the radio control linkage to the servo, and I think it's time to test the radio control system to make sure it all works fine. But before I do that, I think it would be a really good idea to fit the four screws that hold the engine into the boat. The steam engine assembly is secured into the boat, and I'm switching on the radio control. I switched on the transmitter first, and then the receiver. And as you can see, well, it sort of works, but unfortunately, the battery's flat. But never mind, I turned off the radio control system and moved the servo manually. And as soon as I connected the airline, everything runs very smoothly with a lot of power here's a shot of one of the paddles on the outside of the boat i'm not running it for long because these paddles require water for lubrication the noise that you can currently hear is not because the pipe's blown off the engine i've removed it i'm using the airline to blow the dust off the boat because i'm going to touch up the paintwork around the edges most of the boat was originally painted using matte black paint so i'm duplicating that I'm just repainting the parts that have been damaged, mainly around the edges. When I first started this series, I had an inquiry from a viewer, and as I make this video, unless something goes drastically wrong, this boat is now sold. Very shortly, I'm downsizing into a smaller property, so I'm going to be selling quite a lot of the models that you see on these videos. And if you're a Patreon supporter, you get first refusal on any models that I have for sale. 
and also as a thank you to my Patreon supporters, the price of the models will be cheaper. This particular video was made on Monday the 6th of May 2019, and it won't be available for public viewing on YouTube for quite a while. Back to the plot, this is a Ripmax Futaba battery charger, plugged into the mains, and I'm connecting it to the battery. And as you can see, the little light comes on. To conclude this video, here is a shot of the battery charging. That's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.